everybody, and welcome to Orange First, brought to you by Otterbox, the maker of this beautiful little case right here. I'm Lionel Bienvenu. This is Woody Page. We are here on Victory Monday, an Orange Monday for Furniture Row Racing. Way to go, Furniture Row, winning the NASCAR championship. Uh, so it's uh, Victory Monday for them, Orange Monday. But uh, for the Broncos, Woody, it is Pink Monday, Pink Slip Monday oh. for Mike McCoy. Big news today, the Broncos have fired their offensive coordinator. And I, he's not taking a victory lap today at all. No, you're right, you're right. <laughs> and I just finished writing a column that's posted uh, just to promote it. That I have it right here. Basically, yeah, he's the sacrificial scapegoat. That's somewhat redundant, but I wanted to make my point that there are a lot of people out there that should be getting pink slips. First and, domino and, to fall, and the, and the guy who hired him, and that was his first move, uh, this is his first firing. So Vance Johnson, uh, pardon me, Vance Johnson uh, was another guy. Right. But uh, Vance Joseph uh, really, I, that had to be a difficult decision for him because this was a guy he reached out to right after he got the right. job and wanted him to come to Denver. And Vance just said in his press conference, and Troy Rink's going to join us live, he said it was difficult for him, but that a change had to be made. And I found it odd. He said he has to take the fall. Well, normally the head coach is the one who has to take the fall when right. the team does as poorly as it's doing. Well, I, you're right. Vance said uh, he, he made this decision because the pass game had not improved uh, from Trevor Simeon uh, to Brock Osweiler. Could that have been because of the quarterback? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe there's something there, a consistent factor right there. But uh, he also said for the quarterback moving forward, uh, all signs point to Paxton Lynch. I, I said that it would be insanity if they decided to go with Brock or Trevor in the last six games of the season or against the Raiders here. Vance Joseph himself said three weeks ago, insanity, they can't keep doing the same things over and over. That would be insane. And you can't keep doing Trevor and Brock. That would be insane. you got to put Paxton Lynch in, give him six games, have Musgrave open up the offense, and see where you stand with Paxton Lynch moving forward. Well, I was in bed this morning and I heard about the decision and speaking of me being in bed embedded with the Broncos That's not a good visual but anyway go ahead <laughs> embedded with the Broncos is Troy Rink let's yes. uh, let's get his re immediate response to what Vance Joseph has just finished saying yeah, exactly. at uh, the headquarters yeah we called it last night on his Finney Sports Extra uh, Woody and Troy said Mike McCoy was probably going to be out he's out Bill Musgrave is in, and it looks like hopefully Paxton Lynch is in, although that's not official. Troy Rank, live at Dove Valley, who just was there for Vance Joseph's press conference. Troy, uh, as we heard, McCoy's out. We know that. But uh, Vance was not, um, not going to give up Paxton Lynch at this point. Yeah, he wants to talk to Bill Musgrave and the new offensive staff to see what they think if Paxton is ready. But I will say this, it now comes down to whether they believe Paxton can digest the game plan and execute it against the Raiders because Vance deemed him healthy. I asked, what would keep him from playing? In other words, why not play him? And he said, nothing would keep us from playing him. He's healthy. So what would stop it is if Musgrave says, you know what, he's just not getting it. He's not getting it quickly enough, which then would be a stinging indictment of Lynch if he can't get on the field now. Uh, it, you know, for what would be a simplified game plan. But this really came down to, as Woody mentioned, McCoy is a scapegoat in this, but where I thought Vance failed was not going to McCoy, you know, three weeks ago and saying, run yeah. the ball more, right. get out of three wide. It's not working. I was reporting this for weeks that he was deferring and showing too much respect to some of these veteran coaches. There was a reason McCoy got fired in San Diego, and you let him act like the head coach here and run his offense. That's fine. I like that scheme. It doesn't fit their personnel. They don't have three receivers. They don't have a consistent tight end. Oh, I like the, the kid, Austin Trailer I saw yesterday, but they don't have Phillip Rivers or Peyton Manning. And they were running an attack that suited a quarterback of that ilk. And also, I did think it was interesting that Vance Joseph acknowledged that the quarterbacks haven't been very good. And that is part of this. I think in Simeon's case, he was capable mentally of digesting the McCoy game plans but not executing it with his skill set. In Brock's case, I don't know that – he digested as well, and it doesn't suit his skill set. So, again, as Lionel said, at 3-7, and seven, no team since 1990 has qualified for the playoffs at reaching 3-7. and seven. Yeah, well, they're, they're, It would be so hard not to play Lynch at this point, unless, again, he's just showing he cannot 
digest the game plan and go out there on Sunday, then that's on him. That's on him if he can't get ready. Guys, this morning I went back and looked at uh, uh, Paxton Lynch at, at University of Memphis, and I'd like to ask the two of you about this. The, the issues, Troy, coming out of college were lousy footwork, grasp of a game that was not simplified, right. and that, that means and we've kidded about it over the past couple of years, the po posters on the sideline of squirrels and, and cheerleaders. Right. And squirrel that, play. Yeah, all that. Yeah. And, and the third thing, that, that he was good in a spread offense but was not great in a passing game that went down the field. So do you think, Troy and Lionel, that we've seen enough out of him or can see enough out of him that he's corrected those three flaws? Well, I got to say six games of Paxton Lynch to, to make that decision. We've seen him in, in spot work a couple of games last year. We saw him some in preseason, no regular season games this year. I, I, I haven't had the chance to make to, – to make it, we see him in training camp too, and he obviously didn't win the job in training camp. Throw him in for six games. We've all said it. The season's lost. There's nothing really to play for here, except you need to find your quarterback. And we, we you guys talked about it last night, Troy. You don't believe the quarterback is on the roster at this point. Chad Kelly, we haven't seen him. Paxton, we haven't seen him either. But you don't, you don't believe Paxton Lynch, Troy, is going to be the guy moving forward. I, I just haven't seen that. What bothers me we about need Lynch, to see it, though. It, yeah, what bothers me about Lynch is he's not a type A personality. He yeah. got beat out by a seventh rounder twice, and it, it didn't seem to bother him. I've never covered a quarterback who wasn't competitive. And, and Lynch, it, at times, he just feels like his goal was to reach the NFL, not be successful in the league. And this is another prime opportunity, just as, as camp was, to take the job. So we'll see. But if he does play, I want to see him in a run, you know, run pass option offense where he gets out and runs a little bit. I know he's 6'7", but do everything he does well and see where that takes you. And is there enough there you can build an offense around? Or is it, you know what, he can only do five, six plays and they'll scheme that up in two weeks and we have no chance and we need a more well-rounded quarterback. But I agree with you, Lionel, that you can't leave this season without knowing what you have in him. Well, and if you don't, you know, shame on him and maybe shame on them. Yeah, you got to pick a quarterback. If he's not the guy, you got to pick another quarterback, maybe in the first round, and sign a veteran if Trevor Brock is not going to be the guy. This has to be cleared up. We can't have any but more the, quarterback the, confusion here. But, guys, the timing of this uh, is so misunderstood by me because <laughs> Mike McCoy here once before – took a young quarterback and totally changed the system to fit that quarterback. You would think that he would be qualified to develop a system for Paxton Lynch that would fit his abilities right. out of a spread but he offense. Showed none of that, Woody. He showed none of that flexibility this time around with the Broncos. He was complete stubbornness boarding on arrogance staying with that three wide set. They've thrown ten interceptions during the, their last ten interceptions, nine have come out of three wide. The one game, the play that changed the game yesterday, four yard line, three wide set. It's insanity when you're running the football. I mean, that the McCoy that I wrote about and talked about in the off season, I didn't see any elasticity in his game plans. Woody, I saw a guy well, stubbornly believing he I had Philip Rivers Troy. under center. I understand what you're saying, but I'm talking about with Paxton Lynch coming in that you think he'd be the guy because let's talk about it. Musgrave really is is a West Coast offense kind of guy. Is that a is that an offense that suits Paxton Lynch? Yeah, I don't know that. Find I don't out. know what suits Lynch at this point. <laughs> I really don't. I'm not being sarcastic. I, I don't know. know what would suit him. Right. I really don't. I know that if you try to run the playbook that they were running out there the last – 10 weeks, Lynch has no chance. Zero. But if you simplify it, throw in some runs, make it use his athleticism, get him outside, out of the pocket, I mean, maybe, maybe. Again, I, I'm not saying that with confidence. If you run the offense they've been running, he has zero chance to be successful. All right, let me bring this up, guys. Um, uh, John Elway is kind of at the center of this firestorm uh, between calling the players soft on Friday, having the players kind of respond and basically say, if we're soft, you're the guy that brought us all in here. You're responsible for this team. Your fingerprints are all over the whole thing. Um, and now the quarterback situation. He drafted all of these quarterbacks. Um, and a lot of the blame has to go on him, as you pointed out last night on Xfinity Sports Extra. Look in the mirror, Woody, for, for John Elway. Now, moving forward, how much is Elway going to have his fingerprints on this decision, guys? Uh, Woody, I'll start with you. 
Um, how much of this? I know Vance Joe said I fired McCoy. Then we then I talked to Elway after that. But how much did Elway say McCoy's got to go put Musgrave in and you better play Paxton Lynch? Is that what's being said? I think he did the same thing he did a couple of years ago. That he, even though Vance Josephs is saying, I'm making all the decisions, right, right. we meet every day and talk about it. I think John Elway's told him, let's get back to running the football. Uh, that's what he told him after the Rams game two years ago run the football. And he talks in simple declarative sentences. Not saying he's not a very intelligent guy. Went to Stanford and graduated with a degree in economics. I'm just saying that when he talks, he'll say, right. we're a little bit soft. Or pull the trigger. Or, yeah, you know, run the damn things. ball. I mean, he's, he's, he talks in those terms in regard to football. So I think his fingerprints... Are, and footprints are all over what's going to happen going forward, particularly in the offseason. And, Troy, I think you would agree with me that it's got to go way beyond just the players. More assistant coaches are going to bite the dust. People in the personnel department. I could see the scouting department being overhauled because John Elway at some point is going to have to take the blame because he is the guy that's making all the decisions. Right. It is his draft. Well, look at his draft. It's his choice on free agents. Well, the Matt Russells of the world can't can't just sit back in the background and accept none of the blame for this. So those are the guys that are also going to have to look in the mirror. Well, in the case of the Broncos, part of the issue here, Woody, is since 2012, only three teams have not drafted a pro bowler. Broncos are one of those teams. Browns are obviously on that list as well. There's no infusion of young players coming through. So, Elway, no one is blameless when you're this bad. I mean, it's not on one guy. It's not like just Mike McCoy. It's not just the quarterbacks. It's erosion of talent across the roster. They're offensively, they're not very good. And you wrote about it, Woody. I mean, it, it's not just a scheme, one player. Now, again, if you had Peyton Manning, could you put uh, Revlon blush over a lot of this? Yes, but they don't. He's not walking through that door. But they have a lack of talent offensively. That has been proven unequivocally for basically two and a half seasons. And there's no young guys coming to the rescue. And so that's this year they have one guy contributing in the draft, Bulls who hasn't been very good for the last month. One guy contributed out of the draft class. Yeah. And you look to previous draft classes, the reason they had to re-sign Emmanuel Sanders and pay more money to him, which probably should have gone for a tackle, is because Cody Latimer never developed. You know, they need Jake Butt, but he's not playing this year. I mean, they, go, they haven't had to be in for three and a half years. So no one can be blameless in this. And it, the Mia culpas have been coming for the last two weeks from Vance, from Brock Olivo, and Mike McCoy. You know, McCoy wasn't bitter as much as, you know, he understands it's a performance-based business. But to sit here and say he's the cause of their problems, the root cause of their offensive problems is they don't have much talent, and they need to figure out what few things can they do and do that well. Stop pretending you have a bunch of weapons and all this diversity when you don't. Do a few things well. Keep yourself in a game. Lionel, I would just add, and nobody's really talked about it, this was a bite for John Elway of close to $3 million. Dollars. Yeah. That's what they were paying uh, the offensive coordinator. They're right. having to eat that money. So, I mean, in this day and time, I mean, they've got another guy out there that's getting $90,000 every time he suits up. Uh, are you going to continue to pay a running back that oh, you're using Charles. three times a game? Yeah. Yeah, Jamal he Charles, right. 78000 a game. I can't see his future being much longer here either. Yeah. I well, mean, it just doesn't make sense to not play D'Angelo Henderson. Yes. I was going to say, D'Angelo Henderson uh, needs to see some action. Well, can I mention Connor McGovern, who was uh, right. supposedly a great replacement at center? I mean, can we not see him at guard right. or even tackle? I mean, the, uh, Jordan Taylor made one good catch yesterday, did a good job. He didn't return any punts for 20 yards. Right. He mostly fair call, but he did catch them. I mean, I think it's time, even if you put Paxton Lynch in there, to see some of these guys because they're going to need, and I wrote it last night, they're going to need more than two dozen new players next year. The free agents. Well, here's the issue. Here's the issue. Go ahead, Troy. And I, I agree with you, and he, they should go younger, but to do that, I would think Vance Joseph's going to have to get assurances from Elway that he's coming back, because if they lose out, I don't think Vance survives that, and I think that's going to be the interesting dynamic. Like if Lynch doesn't play, maybe Joseph's like, hey, because when you fire a coordinator, you've moved yourself one close step closer to the plank as the head coach. And if they lose out or go win one of the next six, is Vance Joseph gone? That's that would oh. be the argument they wouldn't be. make public. Th right. That's going to be the argument they won't make public. Is I'm going to play Osweiler 
or even Simeon to save my own job. But that would hurt the franchise. That's why that would be right. counterproductive for yeah. the future. Well, yeah, because when you say, well, uh, we're going to play the guy who gives us the best chance to win. Best chance to win. You're on a six-game losing streak. There's nobody giving you the best chance to win right now. Make a change. Other guys might give you a chance yeah. to win. We, All right, let's we, we try up. to be first. Uh, they're going to Oakland. Right. Thanksgiving weekend. They're going to lose this game. So it's not like it's suddenly going to be, oh, the spurt that changes the direction of this team. They should be able to beat the Jets here. But I hear people talking about, well, look at the teams they have on their schedule. I, they're not as good as Indianapolis. No, I mean, the teams are looking at the Rocco saying, well, look, we can beat them. Yeah, right? they, could beat my, they could beat Miami and they could beat – uh, the Jets at home. I don't know about Colts anymore, but they haven't won a road game this year. That's why it's hard to project them winning anything on the road. But I mean, you look at their schedule, and I think five and eleven is realistic at this point. It might be four and twelve. Right. Yeah. All right. Well, let's wrap this up, guys. We kind of touched on it already, um, pretty much last night and today. But moving forward, and it may be a simplistic view, I just want to see the guys who haven't played, like a D'Angelo Henderson, like a, like a Jordan Taylor, a Paxton Lynch, because the guys who have played are on a six-game losing streak. To me, it's that simple. Get, the, get guys in and see what you have for 2018. Troy, you brought up the point that may cost fans Joseph his job. He may be worried about that. But from my standpoint, the last six games simply change it and see – What's happening? Doing the same thing is insanity and will lead to more losses, in my opinion. A uh, final point out for me is Joe Ellis says all the time, we're trying to carry on the tradition of Pat Bowen. What would Pat do? Pat would have cleaned the house yeah. right today. He wouldn't have put up with this. So if they are actually leading this team and guiding this team as Pat Bowlin would do if he weren't suffering from Alzheimer's, guys, this is the depth. This is Josh McDaniel's depth yes. all over again, six years later. All right, Troy, what do you think? Last six games, I, as again, we touched on it already, but what do you think? Yeah, it's uh, there's not – no, there's not much to salvage yet. I, I see this last six weeks as a game as who wants to be a Bronco, which players want to be here through effort and, and performance, which coaches are going to survive. I mean, Joe Woods is clearly uh, his security is in question. Again, Vance Joseph hasn't Broccoli been questioned. Though. Elway gave him a vote of confidence uh, on Friday. But, again, if they lose out, there's I can't see him surviving that. And Olivo, yes, I mean, uh, although they were slightly improved yesterday, but for me, Lionel, the next six weeks, they're the American Idol auditions of who wants to be a yeah. Bronco. And worth it. But they need, as Ward said, this is not a quick fix. Right. It, it's going to require this year's draft rebounding next year, a great draft, and a move up for a, a, some certainty of quarterback, either through free agency or the draft. Exactly. Yeah. The only thing I'd say to you, Troy, though, the two things I don't want in life are poison ivy and a vote of confidence. Because each one of them followed by a lot of itching and probably a bad time in your life. Well, uh, you know, the old saying is, uh, I stand 100% behind you. And you have to be 100% behind somebody to stab them in the back. So there you go. To push them off the list. Yes. There you go, Troy. All right, All right Troy Rake, live at Dove Valley. Thanks, Troy. We'll look for you uh, later today on uh, Sports Extra on Denver Channel. Uh, also online, tweeting all day from Broncos and uh, uh, giving us the latest reports. And Woody? Uh, look uh, for me later today. I'll be at the barbershop. And you're on ESPN, this uh, network I've heard about. What, yeah. what is this thing, this ESPN thing? Yeah, it's around, a, the, around the horn. I <laughs> know, yeah, it's great. <laughs> and also uh, check online for Woody's column and, and Troy's articles on the Denver Channel. Uh, we'll see what happens, man. It's got to be packed on lynch time, in my opinion. And again, it's, it's Orange Monday, Victory Monday, Furniture Row. Congratulations for winning the championship. This has been Orange First, brought to you by Otterbox. We'll see you again next week. Go Have buy a lamp in Furniture go. Row. Get a sofa. <laughs>